Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Automotive Manifold tutorial. We're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video. We had just finished creating our domain and we are ready to move on to the mesh context. So I will switch context by clicking mesh in the workflow menu at the bottom of the interface. We will continue by creating a new mesh setup via the Pi using the plus icon I've created mesh setup 1 I can select the mesh generation tool that I'd like to use I will use Express for this tutorial and then I need to add the domain uh, that I will use with this mesh setup so I will simply click add to add domain 1 and then apply and close to create mesh setup 1. Now with mesh setup 1 selected in the tree I can go to the properties panel underneath and start inputting the settings for the mesh generator. I'm going to begin in the global tab and first I'm going to select the type of cells that I'd like to have in my mesh. I have the option mixed or full hexa. Now a mixed mesh is made of tetrahedra and hexahedra and it's advantageous in some cases to use a mixed mesh if your domain tapers off in certain areas. You may require less refinement um, in that narrow region if you have tetrahedra in your mesh as opposed to a fully hexahedral mesh. In this case we have a relatively simple geometry so I will use full hexa. Next I'm going to adjust the initial cell size and you can see as soon as I press enter an imprint of the initial cell size appears on the surface of the domain and is immediately updated upon changing the initial cell size and this just gives you an idea of the size of your cells relative to the overall size of the domain before generating the mesh. Next I'm going to select the domain in the tree and in the local tab in the properties panel I want to make sure that capture surface edges is disabled. For this geometry it's not relevant to capture the edges between surfaces but it is relevant to capture the edges between boundaries. If I expand the domain 1 and then I expand the manifold assembly you can see that I have three boundaries and so it is relevant for example to capture the edge between the inlet and the walls. So I will keep capture boundary edges enabled. And next I need to enable viscous layers on the walls of my domain and I will do that by selecting the walls in the tree and then enabling viscous layers under the local tab of the properties panel. If I use a linearized Blasius equation I can estimate the height of the first cell for a y plus value of 1. So that's 80 to the minus 6 in this particular case. So I will input that and I will leave the rest of the settings as default because they are appropriate uh, for this particular simulation. So I am now ready to generate my mesh. I will save my project first and then all I have left to do is click start mesh generation in the tree. And now we just need to wait a few minutes until the mesh is generated. Okay so the mesh has now been generated. I'm going to close this information window and the first thing I'm going to do is have a look at the quality of my mesh via the Pi. So in the mesh quality statistics window I can see 
the number of cells in my mesh and I can also see a number of quality criteria. If I want to have a more detailed look I can go and expand mesh quality fields in the tree and this gives me the option to visualize a set of cells in a certain quality criterion range. For example, if I select equiangular skewness, I can create a cell range. Let's say I want to see skewness between 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, so I'm going to input that for minimum and maximum. And then I'm going to start mesh analysis. Mesh analysis needs to be running anytime you're doing any sort of post-processing on the mesh. And you know that it's running uh, if the spinning circle is present in the tree. Once that is done, I can press Compute and then the equiangular skewness for the cells in the range of interest is computed. All I have left to do at this point is hide the overall mesh and now I can see the cells that I'm interested in. I can also change the minimum and the maximum on the go, like so. Press compute again and I now see a new set of cells in the graphical viewing area. And I can always see what I'm looking at simply by looking at the set of cells present in the tree. Once I'm done, I can simply hide uh, the cells with the skewness of interest and I can show my mesh again from the tree. I'm going to leave mesh analysis running uh, in order to show you how I can view the inside of my mesh using a cutting plane. So I've just created a new cutting plane and you can also see this in the tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the coordinates for the anchor point. And I'm going to orient the normal of this cutting plane parallel with the x-axis. So I can use this x button here um, in the properties panel to do that. Now I can also enable surface visibility to see the surface of intersection between my domain and the cutting plane. And if I enable wireframe visibility, then I actually see the edges of the cells. Now, if I use surface intersection, then the cutting plane will slice through um, the cells of the mesh, and so I see um, the surface of intersection. But if I select cell intersection, then the cutting plane does not slice through uh, the cells, it actually shows, uh, shows them in full. So here you can see all of the cells that the cutting plane uh, slices through uh, in full. Okay, so once I'm done examining the interior of my mesh, I can show front and here I see my mesh again. Right, I can also hide the cutting plane from the tree. And lastly, I'm going to stop running mesh analysis and now I'm ready to move on to the simulation context. I'll see you in the next video.